Well, hello guys, welcome back. I read my horoscope for the week. It's kind of late in the week to read it, but I thought recent events with the gods have been going not well. And something, something's going wrong for me somewhere. And I'm almost thinking, is this punishment from Hermes for ever getting in contact? Because it used to be every time there was a Mercury retrograde, everything went great for me. It seemed like Geminis were divinely blessed and every tragedy would turn into a triumph, so forth and such not. And it seems like for the last couple years, I'm having incredibly hard time connecting to the gods, communicating with them, figuring out whatever it is they want. Though Odin is a special challenge. Odin is a special challenge I don't recommend to anyone unless he picks you and won't leave. Um, he's very hard to deal with. He went yesterday from giving me a gift, in Odin's estimation a gift, to I want to do research because he said I want you to study your runes and I've been having trouble reading the runes and I've been having trouble trying to interpret what does this mean. Uh, when we first started doing this study, he would say don't take the reverse meaning, just I want you to learn the runes. By every rune I've been picking out, I've been picking out reversed. And I got um, Kena's reversed. And it talks about following the wrong leadership. And I'm thinking, what the hell does this mean? Am I supposed to read the reverse meaning or the front meaning or what the hell? And I keep trying to tell him, lay off the runes. This is not good for me because I'm just getting all these disastrous, you know, um, readings. I'm not getting one single reading. I'm either, and I said, the problem is he wants to do it on a daily basis. And if you go through the runes on a daily basis, you go from start to, oh my god, burn everything to the ground, to keep everything, to, you, you know, if you go through each of the runes, they can have very conflicting advice, and it's not a good or ideal thing to draw a rune every day if, you know, you're trying to build a foundation, because you can't just go from, you know, freezing everything on Isa, totally stopping to let's burn everything to the ground today because Kanaz came out to you know let's rebuild it doesn't and it doesn't go in that order it's like rebuild freeze destroy destroy rebuild freeze I said these runes are not working out and I decided today well you know you you church sometimes seems to have good sermons I'll go I'll go listen to them and I think it was the universe answering me because what they've done in that church is they really don't believe in Jesus anymore. Yet, paradoxically, they believe in the Bible. And I'm thinking I can receive one problem this church has. If you don't believe in the divinity of Christ and you just think he's a teacher and you will accept any teacher that comes along, I can see why you people are a perpetual train wreck when these sermons come up. Because these sermons from the same exact preacher can either go from totally believing in the divinity of God and there's a heaven and you're going to heaven no matter what and that's a beautiful fulfilling uplifting sermon to I don't know I'm agnostic I don't believe we have souls but yet all these people are coming up and telling me about seeing ghosts boogity boogity and I'm thinking there's something essentially wrong here this man doesn't know what his faith is he has no idea you know what his foundation is and oh he threw out his Christian foundation because he wanted to go practice Eastern mysticism. Now, I've noticed two things happen basically with Westerners or people brought up with a Western education when they go and start practicing Eastern mysticism. Either they were always meant to be there and they truly do find enlightenment and happiness or they have a mental breakdown and they keep struggling because they really shouldn't have ought to touch that. And this preacher is really in the really shouldn't ought to touch that group because you cannot mix I don't care how talented you are the concept of an immortal soul and a divine God and the divinity of Christ with absolute nothingness after death you you just can't mix these two the whole teaching of Christ is that he saved you and even though some progressives are saying they don't believe in original sin, he saved you. He's your God. He is your personal deity. Yes, you're going to be with him for all eternity. And now I'm actually hearing a Christian preacher say things like he doesn't want to be with his own family for all eternity. And this man has children and a wife. 
And I'm thinking, I'm seeing a serious problem here. This church is just kind of imploding. And so I went to Apollo for advice, and I've, I've been going to Apollo and Zeus's temple for advice because I'm thinking I'm just too close to the Norse gods and we're just agitating each other when I'm seeking wisdom. And Apollo's the only one that keeps this family together. He goes, I know you're going through a rough patch right now with Odin especially. Odin is, I swear, trying to drive me away from Odin. I said, I don't know if this is Odin doing this, or this is a reaction coming up from me, but I, you know, like, for example, when I went to a research of the, the rune, <sighs> crazy power trip woman who believes in oogity boogity Odin came up. That was the first goddamn, um, res you know, result I got. And Odin knows that sets me off. And I believe Odin plays the long game. So I told him last night, I said, we're, we're done. I said, I don't know why you do this. You bring me really close. You're holding really tight. And then explosion pushing me away. And I said, I can't do this anymore. I need stability in my life right now. And you're not giving it to me. And Loki's going, you know, all over the place. And I said, I don't know what to do. I said, you don't seem happy. Either you're holding me close and you're never letting me go or you're doing everything you can to push me away. And I said, I can't take that. I need consistency. I'm not asking for perfection, you know, in the Judeo-Christian sense of a perfect, unchanging God. I said, but I am asking for a little consistency and you have all the gods you have the discipline to do this. And then, of course, you know, after the push away, it's the pull back. And then, you know, this morning I woke up and it felt like Loki and Odin were really close to me. And it felt like, oh, you know, to them, it was no big deal. But I'd had a dream about a god with this curly, reddish, very reddish with gold hair. And I couldn't tell if it was Apollo, was it meant to be Hermes. And they were sort of like in this, this kind of, it looked like a castle. It, it was just gray stone walls. I couldn't see any other details. And I keep, and there goes a goddamn light. I think it's the electricity in the house. Um, I said, you know, I don't know what to do. I really don't. I'm lost. And so I went and I watched a UU preacher because I thought, well, I've told the universe, if you'll play with me, I will, you know, I will play with you. And the universe isn't helping me. Pinterest is not helping me. Um, the only thing that made sense was my um, horoscope about, you know, this thing that seems to be a challenge has a silver lining. So I'm like, okay, maybe I just have to ride this out with Odin. And it's tax season. And that is certainly a challenge. But, you know, thanks to the gods, I can do this. Now, unfortunately, it's the first year ever that I couldn't just go, oh, yes, here's a check. Here you go. I have to do the payment plan, which means I'm paying more money on my taxes this year. But I don't I don't have a choice. I, I would have a choice, but I have heat intolerance, so it's a double-edged sword. Because I thought, I can't consistently keep going to my friends and saying, will you take this over? Will you take me here? Will you do that? And with my heat intolerance, even though I have a month and a half, I like to get things done the day I get them. If there's any human possible way, and there was, I'm like, I'm just going to do it this way this year because everybody's AC has been breaking down, everything else. If I need money in emergency, I'm like, that's more prudent. Now that means giving up a lot of stuff I was doing because taxes for the next three months, not just, you know, oh, suck it up this month and you'll be fine for the next two, you'll be fine, go LARP around in September and October. No. Now, if the gods are good to me, and I ever get that goddamn check from, you know, various outlets, I'll be able to maybe get this done next month. That would be great. I would love to wrap this up next month because then that would take pressure off of me. But it remains to be seen. So I just told the gods it's kind of like a perfect storm. And Odin, of course, this morning, he was very contrite, very sweet grandfatherly Odin because that first result came up about how Odin is this crazy destroyer life god. And another snarky thing had come up about how they can't stomach people who see grandfather Odin. And I'm like, it, it's kind of weird. I get half and half. I get sweet, grandfatherly, kind, gentle, Gandalfy Odin. 
half the time. And half the time I get this out of control maniac that doesn't seem to have any impulse control. And I'm thinking there's something wrong here. And we've agreed that I won't do research on Odin himself because that usually doesn't lead into very good, happy places. But if he wants me to study the runes, I don't have much choice. So we're kind of at an impasse right now and we're having problems. But the one thing Apollo will teach me is that you have to be consistent and you have to be mature about this. Apollo pointed out, you know, the reason that um, Preacher is on the ropes right now is he doesn't want to be consistent, show up in his relationship with the gods. Western Christianity got a little too tough for him. So he bowed out, man. He bowed out and he went to the east and he ain't cutting it there either. So he's wibbling and wobbling between both. And he said either he's going to break and have a mental breakdown or he's going to have to fall back into Western civilization because he is not cut out to be in the east. If people are cut out to be in the east, they just go, man. They never look back. Um, can you struggle during tradition transition? Yes, but his advice was so horrible to this congregation that I immediately said a prayer for his congregation because I'm like, this is this is terrible. You you shouldn't live your life like this. This is the worst possible advice. It was kind of this namby pamby, be who you are, kind of don't have accountability for yourself. Don't you know? Almost if you read between the lines, it was like you don't have to have discipline. Be who you are. Um, you need discipline. You need discipline, especially as a grown-ass adult that has to pay taxes and has to put food on the table and pay utilities. You need some fucking discipline. Just be who you are. Be your authentic self. Your authentic self can't make a goddamn choice. You need to be your false self and let your false self make some responsible choices. You are a grown-ass adult. You're the leader of this people. You're doing a piss-poor job. And that's why I don't belong to a church. <laughs> and I thought, well... These people kind of shot themselves in the foot. They got rid of their divinity. And now they're kind of wandering around in the desert far longer than even Moses did it. I'm like, well, that's why. I, I've i gone through periods where I've done historical research and I've like, okay, I can see the case for why some people think Jesus was made up. And I can see why some people think he was just a man. Because we live in the age where we think we have the absolute right to know everybody's single thought, everything they did. Everything, everything. We think we have a right to that information. If we don't have it, well, they must have made this man up. We have a problem. We have such a large swath of atheism in us now, especially in Western civilization, that we kind of treat people that actually have any kind of faith at all as simple-minded. He's kind of talking about these people that, you know, a priest should not or a parson, or whatever the hell he considers himself, shouldn't be divulging people's secrets. Now, he didn't name names, but he shouldn't be saying, oh, hey, these people are coming up to me and saying they've seen the dearly departed, but pff, I don't believe that. I'm agnostic. That's not what people need when they come forward. He could have been honest and said, I don't know what to tell you. Here are some books, because that's the best possible thing that church can do for their people. But... To just say, Psh, I don't believe it in front of the whole congregation. I'm thinking, that's low class. That's extremely low class. And so it's just been a thing of, I'm like, okay, I'll take this chance to tidy up my household, so to speak. I will work on the relationships, because Apollo will not let me off the relationship with Odin. And I thought he would, because they will not always agree with each other. But Apollo said, if there's something broke here, you have to be the one to fix it. Odin's not going to fix it for whatever reason. And I kind of looked at him. And he says, do you want to talk about a hard family to deal with? And Hermes came by and said the same thing. And they said, look, this, this is your family. You want to bail out. Look at this man. He He's a Christian leader. And he doesn't, well, he's not a Christian because he doesn't believe in Christ. He's a religious leader, and he doesn't even want to spend time, all eternity with his family. He said, we're gods. We don't get a choice. You don't get a choice either. This is your family. You're having a rough road right now, but you don't get to give up on them. Now, if Odin got truly caustic, truly destructive, truly mean-spirited, that would be a different case. But he's going through something right now, and he won't talk about it. And then he'll talk about it, and then he won't. And I think... 
it isn't easy on any deity that they attract extremists. That they attract violent people. Um, because then the rest of us are like, well, if they're God, why aren't they coming down here and, you know, shutting these people the hell up? They're not going to do that. We do have free will, and it's the best gift and the worst curse we've ever been given. Um, they're <laughs> finally back here. I think I was Hermes. Um, we can use our free will to either build other people up or to tear them down. And right now, Odin's having a lot of trouble. And Loki's having a lot of trouble. It's very tempting. I've even been god shopping. Because I said, I don't know what to do with you two at this point. And I've been god shopping. And they know it. I haven't gone behind their back. I've been, they've been beside me when I've said, this is what I want in a god. I want consistency. I want showing up. I want sweetness. I want kindness. I said, if I have to go work with Jesus, I don't mean have to. I said, if that's the only divinity out there other than perhaps the Buddha or, you know, Lord Ganesh or something, that has loving kindness. I said, I will do that. I will miss you intensely, but you're getting a little too rough, you're getting a little too wild, and you're getting a little too angry. I said, I love you. I do. I love them intensely. I said, but I can't help that Odin attracts extremists and Loki tends to attract foolish, silly people who actually have no intention of worshipping him or just in it for the lulz, man. I can't control that. I said, you're expecting me to control other humans. That's not in my wheelhouse. I can't do that. I could give the best speech in the world, but if people just want to dick around and not be serious about worshipping Loki, and people want to be, you know, right-wing crazy militants and worship Odin, there's nothing I can do about that. I do know, though, that neither one of those camps is getting either Loki or Odin. I do know that much, and I can tell you that. Loki, for all the fun he is, and can be, doesn't appreciate when people are dicking around and not applying themselves. As this channel, you knew profanity was coming. Um, Odin, for as tough as he can be, doesn't appreciate extremism. It's not useful to him. It doesn't promote social order. He doesn't want or need chaos or violence in the streets. So I think right now they're just feeling free to let me know their frustrations. And I said, there's nothing I can do. Because remember, I don't speak for the gods. I'm not coming on here and speaking for the gods. But I will tell you to get your shit together. Um, that priest, preacher, whatever he considers himself, doesn't have his shit together. He's, he's off practicing Eastern woo-woo and trying to lead Western Christians who aren't Christians because they don't believe in Christ. I don't know what the fuck that church is. I, I am rightly confused because I don't really believe in Jehovah either. And I'm like, what the fuck do you actually believe in? You have the Bible and you insist people read it, but you don't fucking believe in this shit. That would be like an atheist going around and insisting everybody read the Bible and believe this shit, but he doesn't believe in any of it. I said, you're not making any fucking sense. At this point, I don't think this qualifies as a church. You people need to start paying taxes. Maybe then you will be praying to some divinity somewhere. Because I notice they don't, they don't seem to pray. They don't seem to do shit in this church. And I'm like, no wonder you let atheists and witches and everybody else in. I'm like, I was trying to figure, wrap my head around, what kind of theology do the enlightened theology do these Christians have? Oh, they're not actually Christians. Jesus is their homeboy. In the same way the flying spaghetti monster is because it's all good. Bullshit. So. <laughs> and that's why you love this channel. I'm brutally honest. I can see why I do attract those type of deities because I don't sugarcoat things because life usually isn't a place where sugarcoated things are going to survive very long. So, if you guys like what you see, like, comment, subscribe. I'm going to try to get back into you know, doing more consistent things on the channel. The heat seems to be breaking. I did the terrible thing of the first tax payment. I survived. It's going to be three fucking months of not doing as thou will, but that's life. Welcome to adult land. So I will see you guys later. Bye-bye.